Hello everyone and welcome to a Tempest Box bonus video where I show you how I generated thousands and thousands of MC function files. There's a few reasons why you'd want to use Java to generate uh, MC function files. Um, in my case, I actually wanted to generate a thousand cooldown files. So you can see in here, there's actually a thousand of these. I didn't handwrite any of these. And then of course we have our main function on the end. Um, I've also used it to create uh, like MC function files for some of the run commands of my blocks just so I can have uh, more specific control over uh, what each blocks do and it just helps that I don't have to write 260 lines of code by hand I just think it's very convenient now I don't claim to be any expert on Java um, so my code is probably trash so don't take this as a Java tutorial I'm just explaining to you my process when doing this I'm going to start us off by making a new project. So I'm using a software called NetBeans, uh, which is just an interpreter for Java, um, and it's absolutely free. So I'll link that in the description. I will create a new project here, uh, just a Java application. I'm going to call it example, just, just for this tutorial here, finish. And that will create a new project for us. And it will uh, have a, a little bit of some pre-written code here. Uh, you don't have to mess around with this too much. Um, so NetBeans has just taken a while to load. I'm just going to give it a sec. I think my curse is just bugged out for now. So I don't really like uh, doing things in the main class, generally because static functions are annoying to deal with. Uh, by the way, if you want to understand this tutorial, you might need a little bit of background in Java, but not too much. I mean, you can kind of get the idea of what's going on just by looking at this code. Uh, so let's start with basics. If I just go system out print line, hello, add a semicolon on the end and then press F6 to, to run my little uh, program, then it will just say hello and that, then that will end the build. Now that's great and all, uh, but what I'm going to do is add a new class, which is just kind of like a, a, new, a new file here. So uh, new class, I'm going to call this one example main finish that. Now this is actually where I'm going to store my functions because I'm a lot happier with this one. Um, and I guess what I should do now is just create um, a new function here called cooldowns. It won't take any parameters and uh, the word void me, um, the word void here means that it doesn't uh, return any kind of uh, variable. So not entirely important because we're just dealing with functions here. And uh, the word public means we can access it from, from other classes like, like this one here. Now what I'll do is I'm gonna say system out print line here, hello. And because this is in another class, when I run, it doesn't actually say hello. So we need to tell our main class here uh, that we need to, to run that. So I'm going to add the class here. We can just call it whatever we want. And uh, we'll say new, Example main. So that's just creating an object called name in the example main class, uh, which is pretty useful. And now I just want to say name dot cooldowns, and then that's saying I want to run the cooldowns function from here. Now when I run this, it says hello. Now that's great. So how do we actually generate thousands and thousands of lines of something? Well, you can use what's called a for loop. So if I say for a new integer, i is set to zero. Uh, and if i is less than or equal to 100, then increment it. So what it's doing is we're creating a variable called i, we're setting it to zero, and it's going to run this loop. Then it will, um, then if it's greater than or equal to 100, it will increment it by one and move on. So what will happen if I print out the variable i? What we get is a number that goes from zero to 100. If I were to set this to 50 to start off with, then it outputs numbers that go from 50 to 100. Pretty simple stuff. And so now you can probably start to see how we can do this to generate maybe a thousand lines of code. So run that and we get a thousand numbers that are generated. Not entirely useful yet. So we're going to make this useful. Now this is where things uh, start to get a little bit complicated. So 
um, you'll have to bear with me and if you don't understand it then I recommend looking at Java tutorials from other YouTubers. Um, yeah, so again, I don't claim to be any expert of Java. What I'm doing here is probably a very trash method at the moment, um, but it's all in the process really. So try. So it's going to try to do something and if it's unable to do it, it will catch an exception here and it will say, uh, could not do the try. Could not do it. Uh, so if I had something like, um, let's just create a new, a new integer variable called, uh, example and set that to zero. If I, um, let's, let's create another, another one called a uh, result. So that's to zero. So if I were to say uh, results equals example plus one, uh, then it will be able to, to run that just fine. However, if I were to, to say result equals example divided by zero, well, you can't divide by zero. And so this will fail and it will say you can't do it. So basically the catch only runs if the try fails. Pretty simple stuff at the moment. Okay, so this is where things start to get a little bit complicated. I'm going to create an object called print cooldown and it's of the uh, of a class called print writer and that's actually in the uh, Java library. And we're going to uh, create a new print writer and that's basically going to be uh, the location that I want my, uh, my function to run in this case and always end with a semicolon otherwise you'll get an error. Okay, so we've got, we've got this issue now. It doesn't actually know where the uh, class is. That's because we need to import it. So all I've done, this is, this is why NetBeans is really good because it does it for you. It, it says we're going to be using the uh, print writer class and that's cool. So now we've uh, successfully created um, a, a function file here. Well, we're about to anyway. And what we can do is we can, we can put anything we want in there. So we can say, um, we can say, I want to run something to the print cooldown one, we'll say print line, hello. And you must close it after doing that. So print cool, cooldown, close. And then it's just as simple as that. So now if I were to, to run this function here and then go to the file here, this is called main, open that up, then you'll see here, it just says hello. And because it's a print line, there's a, there's a line afterwards there. Okay, so that's not entirely useful at this stage. So instead, what I'm going to do is we're going to print uh, lots of lots and lines of commands that I want here. Now this is very, very specific to the Tempest box. I want it to go from uh, one all the way up to a thousand, like that. All right, always declare your integers as well. And uh, I want proper spacing there. Okay, um, it's spitting out an error at me at the moment because I haven't created a local variable i. Oh, I, I know the problem. Int i equals 1. Not just int equals 1 because that it won't understand. Okay, so now what I want to do is um, I'm just going to copy and paste some things I've pre-written here. Basically, I'm printing out uh, this text every time and then I'm adding I, which might be any number between one and a thousand, and uh, using these plus signs to connect uh, strings to it as well. Okay, so now when I run this function, uh, you will see here, it's basically printed those lines that I told it to run, except where I put the letter I, that is a number that is incrementing now, okay? Now this is very, very simple if you've got a background in Java, but if you don't understand Java yet, I encourage you to learn it and then maybe come back to this. Um, in fact, I would just look at better tutorials than this one, to be honest. I'm just giving you some background. I cannot stress that enough. Okay, so that's cool. So we, we just generated a function file that has like 2000 lines of code in it, which is, which is okay. Uh, but what if we wanted to generate a thousand functions? Uh, which is quite useful in, in my case anyway. There's, there's lots of reasons why I want to do it, but this is just me. So how would we go, go about generating a thousand cooldown functions? Well, we're going to need another for loop here. Uh, this time I'm just starting off with a for loop. Uh, that's because uh, we're going to be creating uh, a new print writer within the loop inside. Okay, so we're going from one all the way up to a thousand. 
like that. And so every single time it iterates, we are going to create a new print writer function that has a different name. In this case, it's i.mc function. Okay. Uh, and we're getting an error here because we already have something called a print cool, I think. No, 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 that should be right. I'm going to have to figure out what this is. Okay, I see the issue. Uh, so handy NetBeans again, uh, just wants to throw a file not found exception in case there's any kind of issue. Um, and you know what, I should probably put this in a try block because that's just good practice. And then uh, close that off and then just catch whatever exception uh, we have here. So exception E, like that. And then just say system out the print line is to say could not write the 1000 function files. Uh, that's only if it fails though, and I'll just get an error message and that's fine, that's fine. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste uh, some of the MC function files that I have uh, pre-written here. And so um, I explained how my, uh, my boss bars worked in the previous episode of the Tempest Box, episode four. So basically all I've done is I'm printing the same function over and over again, uh, but I is incrementing. So every time um, I'm creating a new function, it has a new number and the numbers inside it are incremented as well. So that's very, very useful. And of course it will not work unless we uh, close the function file in the end there. So now press F6 to run it. And it will take a while because you know it's making a thousand files. And when we go in here, you'll see that everything, everything works quite fine. In fact, if I open up one of these function files, um, in Notepad++, another free software, uh, then it, as you can see, um, it works fine. Now, what if I wanted to change all 1000 function files for this to say something else? What if I didn't want it to say disunity anymore? What if I wanted it to say cooldown? Well, that's, that's really not a problem at all. All I have to do is just go change this one cooldown. By the way, always use black backsplashes uh, to uh, escape quotes if you need to. Okay, so uh, cooldown, run the function again, and wait for it to generate all 1000 function files. Good. And now if I were to look at any single one of these um, function files in here, you can see it's been changed to cooldown. And just to show you that it's working for all of them, if I go down to here, it says cooldown for all of them. I didn't have to edit a thousand function files for that to work. I just had to change my Java program and then I'm set. So I hope that gives you a pretty good idea of how the Tempest box is actually working at the moment. I know it might be really, really simple for some of you and really, really complicated for the rest of you, but all I want to advise is just uh, watch as many tutorials as you can if this is something that you're interested in. And I promise you, if you stick at it, if you stick at it, you will get good, okay? Like the first time I was making function files was uh, with just C++ and I was generating really, really, really simple things. So uh, don't expect to get to this level for, for a while unless you really, really put your mind to doing that. So yeah, I will be releasing this soon. Not sure when, I just want to, to change uh, a few more things uh, such as uh, my items class here. My, my mobs code is a bit of a mess at the moment, uh, my blocks code is absolutely awful. Look at that, yeah. So lots I need to fix, but anyways guys, thank you all very much for watching. I will see you later.